All right, so we're back for the second instalment with Matt on Deneb. Uh, if you haven't watched the last video, a little link will pop up. Click on that and watch the intro video. You definitely need to watch that first. Um, so, Matt, we're going to carry on from last week. What are we showing people this week? Yeah, so last week we had this basic kind of lollipop chart. This time we're going to look at more how to apply dynamic formatting to the visual itself. And we're going to add some additional layers and explore some different I suppose different marks as well to map in the budget values themselves. So what we've got there, the circles are showing different colors based on whether they're under budget or over budget. Yeah, they go in green or red, depending. Correct. Yeah, that's right. So the actual amounts are, are color coordinated based on their variance. So a, if they're less than budget, they're green. If they're greater than budget, they are red. And then we've got this dotted line here, which reflects the kind of unspent budget amount, just to differentiate it from the actual bar itself. Awesome. Cool. So if we dive back into the original visual we used as our baseline, we can go back to our edit. And we'll start off by creating the conditional formatting for our actual points on the visual itself. So you may have remembered we've got our circle here and we've got this color. So we've just generically map that to light gray. So what we can actually do is create a calculation. A couple of ways this can be approached is we could either use a measure to determine the color that's associated with the variance, or we can actually create a calculation directly in Deneb itself. The benefit of doing it within Deneb means that that calculation is then contained in the visual. So if you were to use this template in a different dashboard, you don't then have to also create that additional measure to facilitate the conditional formatting. So to do that formula, we're gonna follow a very similar pattern to what we did with the opacity level. So within the transform object itself, we're just gonna create a new item. So we can just do a comma and then use our curly braces. And again, we're gonna use this calculate function. So first we want to determine whether a variance exists. So if you remember from our last video, we need to make sure that we use this datum property to be able to access our columns in our data set. And this needs to be contained within double quotation marks. So if we use datum and I want to call my budget amount, and then I just want to minus my actual amount. And now I have that calculated field. And you, meant, you mentioned last time that that little full stop, that works because there's no space in the word budget amount. Is that right? That's correct, yep. So if you look at the top one here in the calculate, the general formatting is using square brackets after the datum and then wrapping your column or measure reference in a single quotation mark. But if there are no spaces in your reference or your measure, you can just use a dot and call it directly just to give it a cleaner look. So we've got the calculation. We also want to use this as property just to give it a name. So we'll just call this var for variance. And we'll just apply to make sure that this doesn't error out. So we know that this calculation is working. Then we're going to create a second calculation. And we just want to determine whether the variance is negative. So following the same format, from above, whoops, let me just copy this. So all we want to do is we want to call the var calculation. And again, we just we have to use datum. And then we just want to know if this is less than zero. So this is going to return a Boolean value or a true or false value. And we'll give that a name as well. And we'll call this var negative. We'll apply that, make sure that doesn't error out. Perfect. So now that we have our calculations, we can refer to them at a, with our color property. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this general reference here, and we're going to open up a new set of curly braces. And now we're going to call the expression similar to what we did previously with the opacity level. And now we can call 
our datum and we'll call our variance a negative calculation. Because this returns a true or false, we can then put a question mark after it, just, and this just essentially evaluates whether this value is true or false. So we want to say if the negative value exists, it is true. We want the color to be red. Just making note that they are in single quotation marks. And then using the colon, if it isn't negative, give us green. We'll apply that. And we can see our colors have now appeared up here. Very cool. And those colors can be hex codes as well? They can be hex codes, yep. That's right. So you can, the expression itself, I mean, we could move this just directly up to the transform area if we wanted to, and then we hit play. Nothing changes, it still works. So just, I suppose, to demonstrate, you, you could have the expression purely defined down here, or we can have it generically defined up in this transform section. Perfect. So now that we have that, and that's looking pretty reasonable, we're going to add in our budget components. So first we want to add in our budget circles, similar to what we did with the actuals. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this circle. And then we can use this format button up here just to kind of restructure that. And we'll get rid of the color. So if I add in a circle, we can see they've just overlaid the actual points. And that's because this encoding section up here has defined our kind of global mapping of our data points that is going to be applied to our marks unless we tell it otherwise. So what we can do for this mark is we can then call the encoding objects and using the same pattern like we did at the top, we're just going to call the X axis and the field. And we're just going to redefine the field. So we're going to call the budget amount. And just for consistency, I will define the type, which is quantitative for numerical values. So now if I apply that, we can see our budgets, budget items have shifted. So we're just going to add our color and I'll just make that a gray. Our budget. And I might actually remove this text element for the time being, just to make it a bit cleaner. Oop, just missed a comma. But, so now that we have our budget points, we can add in our unspent budget line. So again, using the same pattern, and hopefully this is starting to look a little familiar. We'll have a mark and we'll define a type. And this time we're going to use something called a rule. And essentially a rule is just a line. So if I quite apply that, we can see that it's overlaid. But again, it's only mapping to the actual points. So we need to redefine the X reference. So I'm just going to copy that component from our budget circles and add that to our rule mark. Perfect. You might notice that it's striking through the actual points, and that's because the layer will render in order of the marks defined. So if we want them, this line to appear behind, we just need to move this to the top. So if I get rid of that, and put it to the top, and make sure there's a comma there because it's no longer the last item. We can see now it's only appearing for the budget components. So we can change some of the properties of this rule. So now that we have our rule, we can add in the dash effect by using the stroke dash property. And this passes in two numbers. The first number represents the length of each dash and the second number represents the space between each dash. So if I put in a three and a six, we get that kind of dash look. 
if you wanted to go for a smaller dash was sorry yep yeah, closer together we can then see that it's more of a dotted look so we'll just keep that three and six and we'll just change the color to our gray which actually is a lowercase so we can see we've now got our dotted line Perfect. So just to clean this up a little bit, we can see we've got some access labels and things like that. We can we can control those directly in the encoding section as well, because there's an access property. So we can say we can define the title explicitly at this level. Otherwise, this will just generically represent the names provided to the measures or columns we've used. So I'm actually just going to remove them. And I'll do that same for the Y axis as well. Just to give a bit of a cleaner look. Cool, so now we have our sort of dynamically colored visual with our budget points that are still interacting the way we would expect it to. It's starting to come together. All right. All right, that's awesome, Matt. Any sort of uh, closing thoughts or other little tips as well along this? Uh, yep, so maybe the last item is just if you've now developed a visual, We'll just talk through how to export this so you could then share it or import it in other dashboards. So to do that, if we just go back to the visual and the edit button, there's this little button up here called generate JSON template. And this is form kind of helps just structure the JSON file. So we can add in a name. So I'll just call this demo. We can add in descriptions. You can add your name. And then you can include a preview, but just be aware that um, if there's any sensitive data in that particular visual, that will also appear in the image. So the second option then just kind of outlines the key attributes that formulate this graph or the, uh, the visual. So you can add some descriptions that can kind of guide the user. Maybe you write some rules on the type of data that needs to be mapped. For example, this should be a text field. And the last button is the generated template itself. And you'll see some of the data that we've written in the previous forms, like the author name, the descriptions, etc., And then the actual code itself. And this combines um, the specs as well as the configuration. So once you've got this, there's a copy button up here. And then we can just paste that and we'll just use this one here. So I'm just using this in VS Code. You could use this, save this in anything. You just need to make sure that the final file is saved as a JSON file. So I've just pasted that in. I'm just going to save this as and stack variance. I'll just call this demo. And that's done. So similar to what we did before with importing it. If I was to create a new page, just the new visual, and just more of a recap. Cool. You just need to make sure you add some form of data first to be able to access the edit button. And then we import from template. demo one and then we should arrive at the familiar screen because I haven't mapped enough measures I just need to make sure I add in all the relevant ones and it will try to auto map because my names are the same it works pretty pretty well otherwise you just need to select it from the drop-down box and you can see we've got our same visual it's obviously just auto resized There we go, we've got our functioning visual. The only other thing to add is just, I suppose, in terms of getting started, there's plenty of resources available out there. In particular, I found that the Vega documentation is, is a really good resource. It really provides a good level of detail, provides lots of examples 
and it even has example visuals. Gives you a sense of some of the basics and it goes through some of the more advanced examples as well. And if you click on one, it will give you the code as well that, that drives that visualization, which is handy. Another good resource is Kerry Colosco's blog. She has plenty of different examples as well. And she provides the Vega or the Vega light code as well. It drives that. So again, another really good resource, especially if you just want to use available visualizations already there. Awesome. So if anybody's got questions about this, leave them in the comments and myself and Matt will get back to you. Um, hope you find it useful. Appreciate you sharing this with us, Matt. No All worries. pretty handy, pretty amazing stuff. And you can just, yeah, you can just start going crazy with this stuff. Yeah, you can just take it to whatever level. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, lots of opportunity to get creative. Beautiful. All right. Thank you very much, Matt. And we'll catch everybody in the next video.